Hey boys, gun squirrels, my name is ModStab and welcome to the Mods Gala. A series where we meticulously break down the elements of each video game and we determine whether they add or subtract from the overall immersion. Immersion. Immersion <laughs> it would be the proper way to say that of each of these games. Now all the game footage that you guys see in this series is actually going to be captured from our live stream sessions. I've been doing a lot of live streaming recently and I, I think it's just really important to involve you guys in as many of these steps and processes and recording and the creative process as possible and I figured why not do that with this series. So essentially what's going to happen is we're going to live stream these games and we're going to go through the entirety of the game bringing you guys along on that journey and then when we end that journey we're actually going to bring the games here um, and we're going to have some footage and recap and i'm going to do a little bit of time but breaking down what i thought about the game and all of these elements and so uh that that's how it's going to be so feel free to join the live streams right now we're pretty much doing them daily um, if you want to stay updated on that while we're shamelessly plugging everything Feel free to look in the description below. We're going to have links to all of our social media, um, be that Twitter, be that Instagram, be that Discord. Discord's actually where you guys are going to want to go because that's where we're going to have the option and opportunity for you guys to recommend content you want me to play, want me to react to, and want me to make the Mods Gala, I guess series <laughs> I, don't, I don't know words are words things are things with all the shameless self-promoting and plugging out of the way why do i keep doing get this just, i gotta do so i gotta do stuff with my hands y'all criteria we're gonna be using for this series are narrative acting graphics and gameplay i think these are some of the the four most important things to really quantify what makes a game feel immersive and what makes people want to come back and enjoy that game maybe even a second time so without further ado let's jump right into this thing starting with the description of the video game a story about my uncle is a first person platformer with story rich elements developed by gone north games and published by coffee stain publishing initially the game was developed by students two of those being sebastian erickson who played the role of lead programmer and sebastian zathrius who operated as lead design the students would later become part of a student group who would go on to found Gone North Games. The game came to life thanks to Unreal Engine 3 and a student project which tasked them to create a non-violent first person game. Now with all the boring bits out of the way, let's get to the sexy stuff. Narratively speaking, how strong is a story about my uncle? There I go again with the hands. It's okay, you're just gonna have to deal with it. I talk with my hands a lot. It is what it be. I think it's really important for a game to kind of grab you from the onset. And that requires a powerful description. And so exactly how does a story about my uncle do that? As taken from the Steam page, a story about my uncle is a first person platforming adventure game about a boy who searches for his lost uncle and ends up in a world he couldn't imagine existed. Take help of your uncle's mysterious inventions that let you jump incredibly high and far through beautiful scenery. Uncover clues of your uncle's whereabouts and meet fantastical creatures that will help you on your journey. As I read that paragraph, my sense of intrigue, fantasy, and childhood wonder are definitely something that makes me want to jump in this game. If you know uh, what I'm saying, jumping, um, platformer, um, jokes. Now a good hook isn't the only thing a developer needs to make a game truly immersive in narrative. You also need smooth and cohesive story. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of setup for this, but one of my favorite ways that the Gone North Games crew decided to really immerse you in that narrative is they took the perspective of the story being told by the father or protagonist as a bedtime story to his daughter. Since the game jumps right in from the storytelling perspective, the game essentially begins with you going to your uncle's place and discovering that things just aren't quite in the same order as you remember them almost as if somebody had to leave in a hurry. This climaxes with you discovering an open locker with a suit that's perfectly tailored to you and that you eventually take into the quote garbage disposal your uncle created. Now this can really best be described as a portal to another world. Once venturing through the platform portal, you find yourself in a beautifully rendered world with caves, floating cities, and a unique cast of creatures which make this world their home. From there, you learn your uncle has interacted with all of these creatures and the environment and then you're tasked with tracing his path to find where he disappeared to. Eventually this culminates in you discovering what happened to your uncle and a quick departure from this unique world. I think we did a darn good job of kind of giving you the little tidbits of the story without doing any spoilers. I, I wanna make it a point to not spoil any of this for you guys because I want you guys to go and play this and experience and give it your own rating. So if we didn't do so good, let me know in the comment section down below, but 
I give myself 10 out of 10, baby. All joking aside, I would personally give the narrative of this game a 7 out of 10 because there's some minor gripes that I have with this. Um, mostly in relation to the voice acting portion, which I think ties hand in hand with the narrative of the story. And there's just... I wish there was a little bit more meat and potatoes in between the beginning and the end of the story to help really fill in a lot of those gaps. Speaking of going hand in hand with good narrative, we find ourselves at the voice acting section. Unfortunately, I think this is the weak spot of a story about my uncle, and we're gonna recap why. The dialogue itself, as far as scripting is concerned, I find to be pretty solid in this game. I find myself really identifying with the situations the characters are going through and some of the emotions that those characters might be feeling. However, the delivery and the voice acting portion of this is a little bit... Lack of a better term, I think it's a little stiff and it feels kind of forced, almost as if it was a, a maybe a first time voice actor, somebody who's getting their feet wet in the industry. Maybe this was done to reduce costs, I'm not sure, but because of that reason, it's definitely the weakest aspect of this game in my opinion. And I think this is perfectly encapsulated when you get to a situation where you have Maddie, who's like the main protagonist companion, for lack of a better term. She gets into a heated discussion with the village elder. Things just don't come off quite smooth. You know what? Rather than trying to explain this, why don't I just go ahead and show you guys? You are forbidden from entering the chasms. Just because you're afraid of what's outside the village doesn't mean I am. I'm nothing <laughs> like you. I'll never be. Oh, no. Trouble in paradise, boys. So... In light of the stiffness in the voice acting, I'm gonna actually give this one a four out of 10. Now, the reason it isn't a little lower on the list um, is because there are definitely some moments where they shine. You have some quip moments and some little quirky dialogue bits and pieces that are no longer than maybe a sentence. I think those are actually delivered pretty well in this game. But the saving grace of this is the scripting in itself. Unfortunately, I don't think the dialogue really drove that home, so I do think this takes away from the immersion and overall experience of the game. But fortunately, it does so in a fairly minor way. Graphics. Graphics, graphics, graphics. I feel like this is the hardest portion to quantify in a game because you can have games like 8-bit titles that people just fall in love with the graphics. They love them and they add so much to the game both narratively and in charm. But I feel like that being said, people oh my little dog is bark. Doggy girl. Wonder if the mail got came. I wonder if it's the mail command. <laughs> that being said, I do believe that most people have like a minimum standard required to play a game. Fortunately for those people, I think this game delivers beautifully. Now, it was developed in Unreal Engine 3, so that definitely means that it is not a slouch when it comes to environments. But I think this game is stylized just enough for you to really have that charming, immersive, like cartoony quality, but also be high fidelity enough where you can look at some of the scenery and think that it's just beautiful. The light banding, the textures, how they illuminate objects in this game are beautiful. So with that in mind, I personally am, am I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. Now, the reason I give it an 8 out of 10 actually has less to do with what's seen on the surface level and more what isn't seen. There's actually a couple instances in this game where I was actually saved or not so much saved by hitboxes. I bring this up because I think hitboxes are a little underrated. I think if you have a hitbox that is sculpted perfectly around an object shape or a rock or a tree, I think that that really makes the game feel a little bit more real and a little bit more natural. Also, in regards to the hitbox situation, this is a platformer and, well, I can't really fault it for me sucking at platformers. In light of that, there are definitely some things I think they could have improved in on textures. I think especially with the kind of creatures of this world, I think the skin textures and things like that tend to come off a little flat or like they're almost a matte texture rather than something that I think could have been a little glossier to really bolster that fantasy effect essentially. So because of all that, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Finally, the last aspect of what makes a game truly good 
gameplay. Now the reason I put this last is because you can have all of the other three almost perfect. You can have amazing narrative, have the perfect scripted dialogue, you can have some of the best voice actors in the world, and you can have an absolutely beautiful game. But if the gameplay is not smooth, it's not intuitive, you're gonna find that the game may be talked about, but not, not in the light that you want it to be talked about in. All that being said, I think a story about my uncle absolutely knocks this one out of the park. When it comes to the smoothness and delivery of how each mechanic in the game worked, I think this was some of the smoothest gameplay, especially when it comes to platformers that I've personally experienced. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure there are a few things in this game where you'll definitely get hung up in the gameplay category. However, overall, it was incredibly smooth. When you use the grappling hook, it was truly smooth. You didn't have this juddery back and forth issue with either the graphics or the grappling hook zipping back and forth. And it had a really smooth acceleration and deceleration. The further away you were from an object, you would use the grappling hook, it would zip. And as you got towards the end of that line, you would slow down ever so slightly, allowing you to really kind of set up the platforming capabilities of this game as smoothly as possible. Eventually, you actually got to a spot where you had the use of rocket boots. And yes, I said rocket boots. Every good platformer should have them. The boots were relatively smooth as well. They had a nice acceleration and deceleration, just like the grappling hook did. And with the combination of those two things, you would find yourself being able to explore areas that you didn't think were possible. There was no limit to the possibilities of your exploration in this game. And, and as a matter of fact, although it was a pretty linear game in the sense of platforming, you could still explore and find little side quests or little kind of bits of story that kind of really add to the overall experience. As a matter of fact, the only time I found that I was having issues with this game when it came to the gameplay mechanics were actually when I started relying on one tool too often. Because of the slew of options available to you to traverse the landscape of this world, I think it, it's a very simple platformer. There's only just a couple spots that I actually got caught up in when it came to ease of gameplay. One of those actually being more of like a challenge just for an achievement, and the other one was very close to the end of the game and had i just paid a little bit more attention instead of trying to ramrod my way through the middle which is definitely why i suck at platformers it was a pretty enjoyable experience it's a pretty simple experience it's one that i enjoyed doing on stream because i was able to really relax play the game enjoy the scenery enjoy the story but also really talk to the audience that was there with me so gameplay nine out of ten the only reason it isn't a 10 out of 10 is because i just feel like there was a couple little tiny things they could do to really spice up and maybe even make the gameplay a little bit more complex that way you have the option of hitting like a skill cap or a skill ceiling and giving players that sense of accomplishment of doing something that maybe somebody else in the world might not be able to accomplish when it comes to the overall immersion and experience of the game, all the four things that we outlined today are pretty solid. The overall narrative of the game is charming, it's easy to understand, and it's easy to relate to. And although the voice acting is probably the weakest part of this particular title, it wasn't hard to understand what the actors were trying to portray with their acting, it was just a little stiff. But that being said, you still understand what they're trying to convey with their performances. Graphically speaking, this is par for the course for what I would set as the standard for most titles. I think this overachieves a little bit in the graphics category in the context of if they would have been a little bit more stylized, they absolutely could have gotten away with it. So they certainly didn't need to put as much effort in the graphics as they did, but I give them bonus points for doing that. Then you have gameplay. And because of its simplistic nature and, and really ease of adaptation um, for the average player, I think this is something that can really connect with all audiences. Pretty straightforward and pretty simple. So on a scale of one to 10, I would put this title somewhere between a seven and an eight because there are definitely things they could have done to improve it specifically in the voice acting category, but it's a really enjoyable game and I don't think you'll be wasting a single penny or a minute of your time should you decide to invest into this game. You know, I can't help but think I'm forgetting something. Oh, totally unscripted portion of this video. My favorite part of the game, the menu. It's getting late, honey. Okay. No, I want to know how
how it ends. Sorry. That is such a cool... I did that by accident. That was such a cool little accent. So I accidentally bumped the exit button. And the kid was like, no, I want to see how it ends. Please don't end the story yet. That is so cool.